Hello, everyone. Welcome to Whimsy Creek Art. My name is Megan. In today's video, I'm going to test out the apple barrel pouring medium. And I got mine at Walmart. It comes in a 16 ounce container. It's the apple barrel pouring medium. And mine was $7.97. And so it says that you need to add one to one ratio. So equal parts of pouring medium to paint. So today I have petunia purple, cobalt hue, aqua sky. This is one of their new colors. Lately they've had quite a few new colors. Cameo pink, and this is a real nice subtle pink. I've been really enjoying that color. And bright magenta. Now, actually, all five of these colors are just really nice colors from Apple Barrel. Uh, they all dry pretty um, like they are. They don't really darken or lighten. They dry true to color. So what I have here is about half the bottle. So one ounce of paint, and I'm putting one ounce of pouring medium. So four of the colors I do, I'm using one ounce, that light pink, the cameo pink, I actually did the whole bottle. So two ounces of paint and two ounces of pouring medium. The rest of them, I'm just using one ounce of paint, one ounce of pouring medium, but equal parts, no matter what you're gonna do, equal parts. So, so far, I do like the consistency of this. Uh, it's a similar consistency to Floetrol. Uh, Floetrol is usually what I use for my pouring medium, but um, it is mixing very nicely. I am noticing it's mixing up pretty easily, but um, a nice consistency. I don't feel like I'm going to need any water at all. And this is just with the craft paint and craft paint tends to be a little bit thinner. So with the consistency of the apple barrel pouring medium, equal parts to the apple barrel paints, the craft paint, they're a little bit thinner. It seems to be a nice consistency. And I've got several videos on the consistency you're looking for, but this is what you need to do is mix it all up and then see how I'm kind of letting it kind of run off the end of my stick. What you're looking for is like warmed up honey or if you've ever made crepes, the kind of the consistency of a crepe batter or a really thin pancake batter. So I am putting just uh, two drops of treadmill oil in just the two colors, the cobalt hue and the bright magenta. I tend to put silicone only in my darkest color or just two or three of my darkest colors. So out of these five, I'm just gonna put them in the two, those two colors. So today I'm going to pour on a 4 by 12 inch canvas. And these are real nice deep canvases. They have real nice deep sides. I like them. So I have a 3 ounce cup. And so this 4 by 12 inch canvas, it's pretty, um, it'll cover the sides and everything. 3 ounces is a pretty good amount for that. So for the first technique, I'm going to do a few different techniques here. For the first technique, I'm going to try a dirty pour. So I'm just layering the colors just randomly in the cup, and then I'm gonna just pour it there on the canvas. Now, um, I did mix silicone just in those two colors, so we're gonna see how this pouring medium kind of reacts with silicone and how it pours. I liked when I'm trying a new pouring medium to try out like a few different techniques. So stick with me to the end because I feel like I found what the technique that this pouring medium does best. Definitely, definitely like how this pouring medium does a flip cup, which I do at the end. So um, I like to use Floetrol because I've used, I feel like Floetrol is a good all around pouring medium and it works real well with all different techniques. And so this pouring medium, it did okay for a dirty pour. I would say it was kind of um, mediocre. It's all right. I might try it again with some of my um, thicker paints, my heavier body paints. 
but um, it did all right uh, here. I'm just getting the edges, tilting it. So I'm not seeing any cells yet, which is kind of interesting with Floetrol. You're going to see cells right away. But I do like that I'm getting a nice, the colors aren't really muddying a whole ton. I am seeing a definition in the colors, a nice smooth consistency when I poured. So, so, so far, I would say it's it's all right. I mean, I definitely still like my flow trawl for this, for the dirty pour. But let's see when we torch it. This is a, a chef's torch or a creme brulee lighter. Um I'm just, I'm not touching it to the surface. I'm a few inches up above. Uh, not too much of a change. Okay. So let me give you a close up because this was actually very interesting, this pouring medium. So this is what it looked like when I was all done. Here's a close up. It's all right. I'd say it's mediocre. This isn't probably um, my best dirty pour. Uh, just a couple of random weird cells. Now here's a couple of close-up shots, and you can see here the uh, side of the canvas, the edge of the canvas. That's the one thing that makes these canvases so nice, nice deep canvases, about two inches of the sides. And this pouring medium, it covered the sides real well. Uh, okay, so here's a close-up of about a half an hour, 45 minutes later. Random cells have popped up. All right. Okay. I haven't had that happen too many times where cells continue to pop up quite a while later. But they're very interesting, uh, nice looking cells, but they continue to pop up for a good hour or so. So that is the dirty pour. Now I'm going to try a napkin ring paint pour. So this is a nap using a napkin ring from the Dollar Tree. I just flooded the canvas with that cameo pink. Now remember that does not have silicone in it. And then I have a, just a Dollar Tree napkin ring, plastic napkin ring. I find those at the wedding department. And I believe there's six of them in the package, six for a dollar. So I'm just laying that down in the middle of the napkin ring. And you can do this, an open cylinder pour with a piece of a cup. You can do it with a toilet paper roll. Many different ways you can do the same technique. So I did give it just kind of like a figure eight stir. Didn't completely stir it there, but kind of just real quick. Now I'm just kind of dragging it across the canvas. So a napkin ring paint pour is actually one of my favorite paint techniques. But um, I would say with this apple barrel pouring medium, it, it was okay. Again, kind of mediocre. So now I have a section of aquarium tubing, and I'm just kind of blowing out the edges, seeing if I can get a little bit more interest there. I'm um, going to go ahead and torch it again, not touching the tile, not touching the surface of the paint with the flame, but just kind of hovering above. So you will see that canvas to the left. That's one I continued messing with and I ended up just destroying the composition of that design. I was seeing how well uh, some of my cell activator worked with this pouring medium and it didn't work too well. But that's what that canvas to the left is. So all right, we've gotten a few random cells to pop up. It's all right. Again, kind of mediocre. I don't know if this technique is the best with this pouring medium. So we've done a dirty, dirty pour. We've done a napkin ring or open cylinder pour. They're all right. I think that I will experiment a little bit more with some other paint brands mixed with this pouring medium. But I still kind of like Floetrol. So look at those cells. Really pretty, nice cells. I don't know. I think I will still experiment a little bit more with this pouring medium. I think it definitely has potential, but um, I like how smooth it is. It really mixes up well. So, all right, here is a flip cup. And I definitely think the flip cup technique does well with this pouring medium. I got some interesting, really beautiful cells doing a flip cup. So again, I'm using a six by six inch ceramic tile. 
And I didn't do anything to really prep the surface, just cleaned it real well, used a little bit of rubbing alcohol to make sure the tile was nice and clear, nice and clean. And so then I am using another three ounce cup. So three ounces is plenty, probably even more than enough for this six inch tile. And I'm just randomly layering them in. Then I'm just going to do a basic flip cup. A flip cup technique is a great technique for beginners. All three of the techniques I chose to demonstrate in this video are really just great techniques for a beginner paint pour artist. So you just put it on the top of the surface of the tile and flip it over. So all right, there now I have done a flip cup. So really not too many, no, no cells actually, and not too interesting just yet, but just wait. It really gets beautiful in just a moment. So now I'm just tilting, of course, to get all the corners, all the edges. All right, so that's what it comes up with just there, but just wait. Wait until I torch it and see what shows up immediately these beautiful, beautiful cells show up. Look at that. Okay, in just a moment, I'm going to give you a close-up. These are really interesting shaped cells. They're really interestingly like kind of layered and clustered together. And so I like the interest they've given. And then the middle, they even gave cells that were kind of like translucent blue. It was very interesting. And these tiles have now, um, all the three of these pores have now dried. This pouring medium dries beautifully. Look at how they've kind of clustered together there. Very interesting. So let me know if you've used the apple barrel pouring medium. Let me know what you thought about it. I think it's, I, I still prefer Floetrol, but I think it definitely has its potential. This flip cup really turned out beautifully. So I am excited to use it with some of my heavy body paints. So we'll be experimenting with that one next. Thank you for watching and you have a great day.